The Story of St. George and the Dragon A long, long time ago, in a faraway kingdom, there was a large cave. In this cave lived a dragon. If the dragon would breathe on a person, they would die on the spot. At first, the dragon was sleeping in his cave for many years, and so he did not disturb the villagers. But one day, he woke up and threatened to kill them, one and all. People had no choice but to come to terms with the dragon. They agreed to give him one person every month, so long as he left the others alone and unharmed for the rest of the time. The dragon agreed. But how were they to decide which person to sacrifice? The king decreed that the names of every citizen should be scratched onto pieces of pottery and kept in a great urn. Each month, one of the names would be drawn out of the urn, and that person would be given to the dragon. In this way, men and women, rich and poor, could be chosen to be fed to the evil beast. On the day the first lottery was made, and to everyone's surprise, the name of the princess was shaken out of the urn. According to the king's own law, his daughter must be sacrificed. The king was very, very sad, and he called the people together and offered them gold and treasure if someone would agree to trade places with the princess. The judges who oversaw the lottery said that it must be completely fair or else the people would no longer accept it. And so, much saddened, the king said to the princess, My dear, I shall never see your wedding day. A week went past, and the day arrived when the princess should meet her fate. The palace servants dressed her in her wedding gown and placed a crown of flowers on her head. They led her out of the city in a procession and headed for the lake near the cave where the dragon lived. The servants knew that this lake was where the dragon cooled himself off in the heat of the day. As they were on their way, a soldier came riding up to the city. His name was George. George stopped and asked why such a beautiful young woman was looking so sad on her wedding day. A citizen replied, Because, according to the law, she must be offered to the mighty dragon so that he can spare us all. George immediately replied, If that is really the case, then let me slay the dragon and prevent the death of the princess. The citizens warned him that nobody stood a fighting chance against such a ferocious plague-breathing lizard, but George was determined to save the princess. The people tied the princess to a tree by the lake and left her there to meet her fate. The dragon emerged out of the swampy waters to take the princess. But George charged up on his horse and flung his spear into the dragon's shoulder. But the spear immediately broke against the hard, scaly skin of the dragon. George thought fast and quickly ran towards the princess and cut her free from her bonds. The dragon was enraged and rounded on his attacker. George retreated and took off his belt. Then he threw it at the dragon and by a miracle, the belt wrapped itself around the dragon's neck like a collar. Immediately, the dragon became as peaceful as a lamb, and both George and the princess were able to lead the dragon back to the city. The people could not believe their eyes. They thought George was a saint because he saved them from the fearsome beast, and so they cried aloud, St. George! St. George! Long live St. George! St. George and the princess got married and lived happily ever after. As for the dragon, well, he also lived with them in the palace and became a good friend of everyone.
the end.